All right, for this next talk, I'm going to go over thermodynamic phase transitions. Now, astronomers, they don't talk about phase transitions because stars are nuclear reactors. They don't undergo any phase transitions. They're all these big shining objects which are plasmatic. So, with astronomers, the only phase that stars exist in is plasma. But being that we're going to talk about phase transitions, we're going to include let's see, gas, we're going to include solids, and we're also going to include liquids. Now, astronomers, they, they, they think they simplified things by just making stars as plasmatic only. Because these are the ones they could see. They were the big, bright, shining dots in the sky, you know. But if a star cools, then it's probably going to become gaseous because that's the first phase transition of a plasmatic structure. It's called recombination. An ionized plasma releases energy as exothermic reactions as it becomes gas. In other words, a plasmatic star, which is really hot, big, and bright, becomes a gaseous star. What astronomers call gaseous stars are gas giants. And we even have gas giants inside of our solar system. We call them Jupiter, Saturn, and maybe even Neptune and Uranus. Gaseous structures. Now the reverse of a gas going to plasma is called ionization. So when a gaseous object becomes ionized, it becomes plasma, which is a distinct phase transition, or a distinct phase of matter. Now, this right here is already beyond the majority of astronomers because to them, these objects are nuclear. So, to hell with gas, to hell with liquids, to hell with solids, to them. But we know better because of this theory that I've been developing. What happens is once the gas giant is formed and it continues cooling and contracting, the gas deposits as solid structure. We call that deposition and or crystallization. Think of snowflakes. When water vapor condenses and snows, it becomes crystals, you know? Those uh, six-sided little snowflakes. Okay, they fall to the ground. That's a big problem for astronomers because they don't realize that gaseous structures, when they lose energy, they become solid structures. As well, gaseous structures become liquid. That's called condensation. That's a basic phase transition that astronomers don't like talking about for some reason. And the reverse, if liquids become gaseous, you call that vaporization. It happens when you boil a pot of water, okay, and it becomes gaseous. So you have recombination and ionization between plasma to gas. And then you have gaseous to solid. Oh yeah, solid structure can become a gaseous structure by sublimation. This is dry ice, CO2, CO2. All right. And then you have liquids going to solids. Here, let's clean this up a little bit. 
liquids going to solids, which would be um, solidification, obviously. And then solids going to liquids would be melting. Okay. And the most important thing you got to realize about all this is that the enthalpy is high when it's plasmatic and gaseous, and the enthalpy, enthalpy drops. Okay? So you have a plasmatic structure. It's always going to become gaseous, and that gas is always going to become solid and liquid material. And the liquid is always going to go to a solid material, which has lower enthalpy. And low enthalpy is down here. Now, during stellar birth, this is the direction stars go, okay? But for stellar metamorphosis, the direction stars go is down, meaning the plasmatic star will become the gaseous star, which will then become the solid star which is, you know, obviously liquids are interspersed in there. And we even have these in our solar system. Sun, you know, Jupiter, Earth. Oh my goodness, Earth has liquids in it too. Earth, it's lava. And then you have Venus, Mars, Mercury, etc. Now, I know what you're thinking. What about the really small ones? Well, those are just smashed up remains of these. When these things collide with others, they just smash up into broken little pieces and wander the galaxy. We call those meteorites and asteroids. So basically, that's thermodynamic phase transitions when it comes to stars. Keep in mind, when you read the establishment version of things, what they do is make a big wall right here. Great wall of thermodynamic impossibility. They say plasmatic stars can never become gaseous. And of course, if they can't ever get past this wall because they have math in the way and assumptions, they can't get to the real meat and potatoes of stellar evolution. Hopefully you guys can understand that. Leave a comment, but basically that's what it really amounts to. Goes up when the star is born, comes down when the star evolves, cools, dies, becomes something that we can stand on.